Uh, do you like these red track bars on the truck? Because uh, if you don't, this is what the red track bars look like off the truck. <laughs> I'm uh, working on leveling it, so I'm taking the track bars off. It's going to be a lot of different steps. Because I've got the track bars, I've got airbags, and then I've got the uh, lift blocks under the leaf springs. So the goal is to take uh, probably two of these out, lower the back a little bit. So we've got to take this U-bolt off. My airbags specifically say don't support the weight of the axle on the airbags. So I'm going to have to take the airbags off. Ugh. With the uh, goal being lower the back. I measured and we're sitting at about 46 inches in the back and 44 inches in the front. So it's uh, it's not level. A uh, guy put a three inch lift, but he lifted it three in the front and three in the back to keep the rake. Since we've got airbags, there's no point having the rake. I can control the rake with the airbags. So first step was taking out these track bars. You technically don't have to take them all the way out. I could just have taken one end out so they hang loose, but I've never taken them out before anyway. I wanted to take them out and see what they look like. I think I'm going to repaint them while they're out as the paint job isn't great. And I don't know, I just, they need some cleaning up. It's been pretty intense hardware though. This is the bolt holding them in. You can see there's got some animal hair on it. The uh, guy I bought this from hit some animal. So I had to power wash the underside of my vehicle like five times, but there's still friggin' dead possum hair in there. I got to use my biggest set of wrenches that I have, 1 8 and 1 16. That's to uh, take these bad boys off. And then the work I've also done is I sprayed PB Blaster on all these U bolts. These are 22 millimeter, but again, it's all aftermarket, so I don't think it really helps for you guys wondering what you've got. It can always be different. But uh, I sprayed these with PB Blaster and then used a uh, 16 inch uh, torque wrench and I've loosened them all up a little bit already. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna finish taking this track bar off. I'll let you guys see what that looks like. All right, so a quick explanation of how these uh, track bar heim joints work. So this is a lock nut on them and then this is the heim joint. So you've got to uh, loosen up this lock nut and once, it's, uh, once there's a gap between the lock nut and the track bar, then you can loosen this whole heim nut. And each heim nut, one will be right-handed and one will be left-handed. So make sure you, may, you know which heim joint goes in which end of your track bar. But that basically allows you to move this track bar. You know, when you twist it, it'll push out on both ends to lengthen it or to uh, shorten it. So you can see, you know, you've got at least that much adjustability in the height the length of your track bar since i'm lowering my truck i'm going to need it to be a little bit shorter and it was already pretty close to as short as it can be uh, so i don't love that but i'm hoping that uh, i got a little bit of play in moving this lock nut up as far as it'll go and then putting this in to allow for the shortest track bar it should work uh, this is a bd suspension track bar that came with the three inch lift kit and we'll see here i'm on the driver's side rear i'm trying to loosen this jam nut but unfortunately my wrench doesn't fit in there because i don't have a lift so i can't go to the bottom and from up here it's rubbing into the uh, bracket so long story short i'm not able to loosen this nut like i'd like to to take some tension off this bar so we're gonna have to just get this bar dropped on this side with a little tension on it not a big deal as long as it's uh 
grade eight high quality hardware, it'll be fine. All right, so. Just gotta get that bolt the rest of the way out. All right, got this out and I removed the bracket on the bottom of my airbags here. Nice and easy, two screws. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Take this bracket off and that's going to allow this section of the airbag to uh, stay up here when the, we drop the axle to pull these out. So, so one of the things I'm gonna have to figure out is how much I'm gonna take out of here and if I need to take this airbag brick out, the airbag has a size range that it operates in, so I need to find out if I'm gonna be within that range. What I'm gonna do next though is loosen these uh, top bolts on the leaf pack. All right, so I measured these blocks with the caliper, and this bad boy comes in at 2.1 inches and each one of these is 0.5 inches so I can take out half inch one inch one and a half inches or a little over two inches depending on how much I want to lower the back the difference between front and back right now is two inches I think I'll take one inch out we'll see the other thing that I uh, need to measure is my airbag here as uh, Firestone's gonna have a certain height that is allowed on my airbag and I don't want to make it too big or too small I can remove this if needed to make it fit. I'd prefer not to though. All right, so this is what it looks like before I lift it up. We ain't level. We'll see what happens once we drop it. All right, I underestimated just how many bolts I'd have to unscrew. So, gonna have to take tires off. So 16 bolts there and uh, shocks. So I gotta do a shock bolt, just one of them, but do the shocks on both sides. And uh, now I'm about to jack it up. I'm gonna try and just do it one side at a time and see what happens. So I'm gonna jack up this side as high as I can and then put these jack stands under the frame because I need to hold the frame up. So there's gonna be a lot of wood. It's gonna be sketchy. All right, so this is what we look like. I've got a jack stand on one, two, three, four, five, two by sixes on the front spring pack. I've got a jack under the axle. There's not really much weight on it. And then uh, got the good old double stack to the hitch. So uh, now I'm gonna go get my air compressor and take some bolts out. All right, U-bolts are off. So now we've just got the spring pack. I just sprayed it down with some PB blaster going to work on loosening these nuts next. They were uh, uh, pretty covered in muck, so I'm not expecting it to go easy. I've still got the shock in there. Uh, the bolt's loosened. I'm just kind of waiting until the last minute to pull it out because I like the extra security it provides me. I don't trust my jack. All right, quick side story. First, it's my dog. Second, these tires. 325 60 R20s. They're like 36 by 13s. They're beautiful. Love them. All right. Anyway, back to here. So these bolts, uh, I'm, I've made progress. I just got like a 16 inch breaker bar and a eh, like cheap air compressor gun. And it's getting there. It's just, uh, they're still tight. It's a lot of physical work. So uh, just keep it on. Well, the air compressor's taking one of them off, but the other one, not doing anything, so I'm having to do it with a breaker bar, and uh, I figured I'd show what it looks like. So, first you power up. Ugh. Let's do that like 20 times. All right, got the nuts off. You can see bolts are still in there. Spring pack is expanded. Uh, this I can't budge with my hands. I don't think it's secured in there though. So I'm gonna beat on it with a hammer because if I can get that out, it's gonna make it much easier to get the, that pack out. So we'll see how that goes.
Alright, I still can't get that lift block out. I've been banging on it. Nothing. So if I look in here, it doesn't look like it's bolted anywhere. Oh, is that a bolt? I don't know. All right, some success. So you can see I clamped the four leaves that are uh, already clamped from Dodge. I clamped them together to uh, squeeze the bottom one. You know, basically you're squeezing the bottom one towards the top as much as you can so that uh, you get the most room for these bolts. You can see this is how much room I ended up with, but uh, that's also sitting in the block to get it out of there. You know, you've got to tilt it, so there's really not much. My brake line definitely has some pressure on it. I had to uh, undo the shock mount. You can see the difference between the extension of my shock mount and as low as my axle will go. So I needed that. And there's some, uh, there's definitely some pressure on some other brake lines running that way. Nothing too intense though. Um, and then I had to, had to hit the uh, overload spring with a hammer and boom, came out. So I'm going to pull this pack out of there and jack this up a little bit to take some pressure off and uh, then we'll play with the pack. All right, so this is what the spring packs look like with uh, no clamps on them besides, you know, the factory clamps there. Uh, definitely, you know, don't mess with any of that. Once you start messing with pulling the springs out, you got to worry about, uh, you know, the springs having a lot of built up tension. But uh, just in here, really the only thing that happens is when I pop this bolt off initially, you know, it makes a pop and it moves about a quarter of an inch, um, but nothing too scary. Then you get the leaf pack out, or at least the uh, lift part of it and the overload. Anyway, so you see there's two bolts. I believe they're just actually attached to this bottom block. I've already been beating on it, that's why there's the gap. So you build up this little jig so that it's not on the ground. And then you uh, just wail on them. I was using a mallet for a while. It wasn't making much progress. Went to a dead blow hammer and uh, made this much progress. So we'll keep going. See how far uh, we can beat on it. That's a spring. Overload out. Now I've got to figure out how to get these apart. Some progress has been made. Look at that gap. So that's been uh, probably a solid two hours of working to get that much separation. I've been uh, soaking it in PB Blaster and wrapping it in a plastic bag, try and keep it from evaporating too quickly. I uh, went at it with a Dremel for a little while to give me enough edge I could put a screwdriver in, smacking it with that, smacking it with that, smacking it with that. I went through uh, way more screws than this trying to wedge a screw or a nail in there, but uh, eventually, you know, I'm just holding it in this grip just for some stability and uh, wedging a screwdriver in it is getting it so far, so uh, we'll see. All right, continuing with the uh, screwdriver prying, I've got it separated this far. Just to give you an idea of how hard I've been working on this, this looks normal. And see how the threads are smashed together there? That's just for me beating down on this screw. That head, that's not secured by anything, it's not threaded. It would rather compress the threads than uh, come out the bottom. So I'm gonna go get a bigger wedge and keep wedging it open. All right, got a uh, tree splitting wedge in there. Oh, yeah. Boom. 
Got it. All right, so let's try and figure out why these were so stuck. Uh, it's a little bit of something there, but overall they don't look that rusty. This was the top side, so that shouldn't matter. Uh, yeah, I don't know what was holding those together. Just crap. All right, now initially my plan was to separate these as well, take the top two off, leave the bottom one in, lose about an inch of height in the rear. But now I'm starting to think I might just do the uh, overload springs. That's 1.35 inches with one block and one overload spring. So I'd still be at about 0.65 higher in the rear. And uh, I think that's fine. You know, I don't really need the overload since I've got airbags. If I get heavy, I just air up the bags. Yeah, I don't really mind them in there, but you know, they're not doing they're not doing much most of the time. They're just hanging out. And that's a lot of weight. Just hanging out for no reason. Might as well take it out. Alright, I got them separated. So I've already cleaned them with steel wool and brake cleaner for reassembly. Uh, my old bolts ended up not really being usable primarily because of the threads. I ended up uh, taking a Dremel to the end because I couldn't get the very end of this one out because I had flattened the threads. But anyway, bolts are not good. So I went and bought new ones. Uh, I, bought, I bought two spares um, and I bought washers that I probably don't need. But besides that... Uh, these are about $15, so $4 a bolt or so, if I got the right sizes. Um, let's do comparisons here. That's stock. This, uh, let me pull these threads down. There's the four, and there's a three and a half. So, stock bolt that I had in there and I think it's the stock from Dodge it uh, it's a little over four inches this is four inches this is three and a half inches the hardware store that I had didn't have fine threads in three and a half so I had to get coarse threads in the three and a half. I think the four is going to be what works though. Obviously fine threads are what's preferred in the high torque situations. Um, and you can see the threading goes down a lot deeper. So that should fit. So I'm uh, going to put it all together and see if it fits. Right, so I'm cleaning up before I reassemble. I blew this out with compressed air. Got it much cleaner. Now I'm taking steel wool and I'm running it in between the leaves. I pulled two of these out. Now this leaf pack is kind of stuck together, so I'm not gonna be able to clean between that. But I'll clean these two gaps just by uh, you know rubbing along it as best you can with your fingers. And I'll blow it out with an air compressor again. But uh, you want to keep this as clean as possible to. Uh, be good on your springs and I hear it's a little quieter. I hear that some of the road noise that you hear is actually from grit between springs. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm probably gonna spray a little lithium grease between them. No idea if that's recommended or not. Oh well. All right, just showing you what I'm greasing. So I'm just taking white lithium grease and a little thick there. Just putting a little bit in there. I'm also just gonna do a quick little like that before install. I lowered my jack all the way, but there's still not enough room to wiggle these in. So I'm gonna need to compress the springs. So in order to make sure that these are lined up while I compress them, I went ahead and dropped some bolts in. These don't do anything besides hold place. I'll clamp them, I'll pull the bolts out, and then I'll uh, try and slide that 
block in. All right, so they're, they're clamped together, and you can see I got a little bit more space in there now. So I'm gonna pop these bolts out and see if we can fit that in there. All right, so had plenty of room to fit them in. So this is with the four inch on the left and the three and a half on the right. Uh, I could use either because the threads go all the way down. But right now I'm thinking I'll use the three and a half because uh, I think I don't want to have that extra just hanging up for no reason. Just got everything put together. So I went with the three and a half inch, half inch grade eight bolts. I looked everywhere and couldn't find torque specs for this, but uh, grade eight half inch bolts give a torque spec of 96 foot pounds. So I put 96 foot pounds on them, reinstalled the shock bolt. Now I've got the jack under, and we're gonna see how close this lines up. Eh, not perfect. Yeah, pretty close, so I'm going to have to find a way to pull on my axle a little bit while I'm jacked up in the air. Uh, it's a little sketchy, but uh, I got partners to keep me safe. Alright, it was pretty easy to line them up left to right, but now I need to bring my whole axle in a little bit. So I'm just going to tap on it and see how it goes. So we're still not a hundred percent lined up. It's off by a little bit. I've been shaking it, but sketchy with the jack stands. So I got a clamp set up on the side of the leaf pack and then on my rotor, obviously keeping it clean with a piece of wood. So I'm expecting this will give me just that little bump I need to close that gap. All right, new day and I'm grinding. I got the U-bolts on. Uh, not torqued or anything, ran into a height issue, and I wasn't planning on trimming them because I didn't really care about the extras, but uh, my deep socket still does not fit, so I'm going to have to trim them down so that I can fit over them to torque them down properly. So I'm going at it with a uh, angle grinder right now. I might try a Dremel on one of them and see how it goes, but uh, some intense steel so I think uh, angle grinder is probably more up for the job all right grinded all four of them I did these three with an angle grinder and this one with uh, the Dremel Dremel definitely resulted in smoothest but it takes a little longer so uh, now I'm torquing them down and you know you got to go like pattern here 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 <sighs> couple times you know I've heard do like hand tight 30 pounds 70 pounds 90 pounds and then uh, whatever the torque spec is for them I'll look that up but I think it's uh, in like the 115 range all right passenger side now so got the wheel off got the u-bolt brackets off that all went easy now I've been working on these leaf clamps and it's a little different than the other side so I've been hitting them for a while and I've noticed that they're not like it's spinning but they're not moving up the bolt so that's because the heads are spinning on the other side that never happened to me because it was so stuck that I took them all the way off and I never had to worry about it but this side it is which is a good sign that they're not as stuck so that's awesome because now when I'm spinning this it's spinning the whole thread so I like that okay so unbolted the shock drop this down and uh, yeah, they're still spinning. So I'm gonna have to grab the head with the vice grip and try and hold it while I uh, back out that screw some more. All right, I was trying vice grips and air gun. Wasn't, wasn't making progress, it was slipping. So torque wrench along with a crescent wrench smashed in there on a piece of oak and it's working. 
So uh, you need an intense glove to hold this. And uh, there you go. That's how I'm able to get at least this one out. We'll see how this one goes. All right, one off, other one's still there. I got a little smarter this time, wedged it in there against the centering pin. Probably not the best thing for the centering pin, but uh, much easier on me. So now I'm just uh, working that with a uh, breaker bar. All right, so got both the bolts off and I lowered my jack a little bit. So the springs are starting to separate and it reminded me I should clamp it now because I'm gonna need to keep these together to have enough room to pull this out. So I'm gonna clamp it, but man, those bolts were dirty. So hard to get the nuts off, even when the tension was off of them. You know, just the rust. Much easier on this side uh, to get that out. A little bit lower drop. And this separated. And this is what they're supposed to look like. Oh, look at that. They just separate. That was two hours of work on my other one to get this far. So, uh, pretty excited. Right, now that I know I'm trimming the U-bolts, I trimmed this one before I installed it. All right, passenger side. So I got the uh, overload and one block out. So I'm leaving my four springs, two blocks there. Just put new bolts in. I've got them clamped. Uh, as a reminder, be sure to put bolts in here um, while you clamp it to keep everything lined, lined, lined up. Um, so. Now I'm going to torque these bolts down and then I'll work on uh, dropping it on here. And of course I uh, cleaned everything with steel wool and I uh, sprayed some lithium grease in between them to uh, try and keep them in good shape. Alright, new uh, idea on this side. So again we're waiting for this centering pin to fall. It's hard to get the camera in there but uh, it's off by just a little bit. So I need to move this whole axle forward. I've been pulling on it and beating on it, but it's not really going anywhere. So, running tie straps up to the frame from around the axle. And uh, I'm just going to pull it tight, and I think that'll work. Obviously, make sure you don't put any tension on your jack. So, I'm watching that and making sure, but it looks like I'm not going to be putting tension on the jack. And uh, I just need to move it a little bit. All right, there's what I've got taken out one uh, block and one overload spring per side. So now I've just got one more U-bolt to cut through. I'm getting pretty close. I'm using the uh, Dremel seems to be uh, easier. Angle grinder works, but uh, man, you take off a lot of metal with that. So uh, gonna finish that up and get close to wrapping up the install. All right, so just cut this one off and I wanted to cover what I'm doing exactly in a little more detail. I haven't cleaned this one up, whereas this one I have cleaned up. So two steps to it. One is I'm gonna take the Dremel uh, on a lower speed and I'm gonna go around the edges, clean up some of, you know, like here, and overall just bevel the edge slightly. You can see this is beveled, so that. And then the main one is make sure you do this with a nut already on, because what you're gonna do is use the nut as the die cutter. So I'm gonna you know, use my breaker bar attached here and twist, reverse this off. And when I get close, you know, I'm just gonna rotate it back and forth slowly as I bring it off and it's gonna clean up all the threads real nice. You know, basically the theory is if you can get a nut off, you can get a nut on. Um, whereas if you don't have one on to start with, eh, it might be hard. So leave a nut on as you do it and uh, bevel the edges slightly. And that's it. I cleaned up all, uh, all eight of them and it's been pretty easy, so. All right, wrapping up. So, got these all torqued down. Uh, one thing I changed is I bought some new grade eight washers that are much nicer than on the other side. So if you're doing all this, I'd recommend some new washers. So got all six of those torqued in. I got the uh, shock mount ready. Haven't done the airbags yet. I'll do that once tires are on, that's fine. And uh, obviously track bar, but that's uh, my final height. It's gonna look like this. Show you the other side. So 
So these are the stock washers that came with it. Yeah, they're just small and they don't look great. So, all right, wheels back on the ground. So haven't measured yet. Overall, I think it looks good. Uh, I'm gonna measure and hopefully I'll have between 0.6 and one inches different from front to back. So let's see. Boom. Closer to level. I'd say that's about perfect. So uh, look in the comments for the details, but we're getting about 10 and a half between tire and wheel well here. And a little bit more than nine and a half here. Um, so wonderful. So here's what the uh, final looks like under here. You can see no overload and two blocks. And the big block, I left that in on my airbags. They're about at the minimum spec right now. But uh, if I take it out, they're like at the maximum spec. Really what I should do is get a medium size spacer, but who's got time for that? So uh, yeah, everything is looking good. Got the track bars put back on. I ended up having to uh, shorten one of the bolts just maybe a quarter of an inch to get it to fit because it did end up uh, reducing that height by uh, about a quarter of an inch. All right, this is final stance. It's pretty close to level, about a half inch higher in the back than in the front. The front actually ended up raising up about a quarter of an inch. When I did this drop in the back, I'm happy with it.